original that was wrote a long time ago by a fellow named William Shakespeare that lived over in the old country. You wouldn't want to hear about that in early this morning, would you? Yeah! You would. Well, now, let's see if I can figure how it went. Now, let's see. Well, now, it's about, it's about this boy and girl named Romeo and Juliet that was in love of one another, just like Josh and Hannah. Only their daddies didn't get along either. And, and what Romeo used to do to see Juliet, he'd put on a disguise and go on over to her house. And he was over there this night. He was over there standing around the punch bowl and having a good time. <laughs> and he seen, he seen Juliet come down these high steps. And he was so struck by her that he give a soliloquy right there. What's a soliloquy, Paul? Well, a soliloquy is, is where you kind of look away off and kind of talk to yourself. Oh. They used to do that a whole lot back then. You do it today and somebody will take you away. But that's what he was doing. And this fella Tibble, a cousin of Juliet's, come upon him with his sword drawn, ready to pick a fight with him right there. But Juliet's daddy, he didn't want no bloodshed right there in his living room. So all he done, he run Romeo off. Didn't go straight home. He didn't. No. He went out and hid in the yard. And after a while, he seen this light come on over yonder. And he says, he's, he, he, he's, he says, hark. They said hark a whole lot back then. <laughs> he says, hark, what light by yonder window shines. Well, Juliet, she stepped out onto this stoop right then. And she give a soliloquy. And somewhere in it, somewhere in it, she says, she says, Romeo, Romeo. She says, what for art thou, Romeo? Well, he popped up and says, I'm right here. <laughs> they decided right then they'd get married. And they went over to Friar Lawrence's house. He was the, he was the justice of the peace in the town in that day. Well, he married him. And he told Romeo that he ought to go off and lay low till he could explain things to their daddies. And Romeo did. He went off. And before that Friar Lawrence could do that, why, Juliet's mama took a great notion that Juliet ought to get married to this other fella and kind of forget about Romeo. And then Juliet was in a bind. And she went over to Friar Lawrence and he mixed her up a drink. And she drunk it and it put her to sleep. And everybody thought she was dead. Oh, they had the prettiest funeral for her. Folks crying and carrying on, and they laid her out in this family tomb. And before Friar Lawrence could get word to Romeo that she wasn't really dead, some of them mean boys that lived in that town told him that she was dead. And Romeo, he figured life didn't hold nothing for him. And he went out and got him this big can of lye to drink. And he went over there to where, where Juliet was laid out. And he kissed her. Let me tell you, that boy kissed her flat on the mouth. <laughs> and he says, with this kiss, I die. And he drunk the lie, and he fell out across to that. And uh, he, was a, he was a big boy for his age. <laughs> and the impact of him falling on her woke Juliet up. And she woke up and seen Romeo a laying dead there. And she took his pocket knife and run it into herself. And she expired. <laughs> and you see, their daddies could have saved themselves the expense of a double funeral if they would have just let them had a cheap wedding. <laughs> you see, they didn't know that till it was too late. And so before I marry these two youngs, I want to be sure that everything's all right with everybody all the way around. Now, you understand that, do you? Boy, that Romeo and Juliet would sure make a good TV show. <laughs>